What's up everybody, my name is Grady Alec and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share about four things I wish I knew before I became an embedded software engineer. So make sure you hit the like button, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is that imposter syndrome is still real after several years of working in industry. Honestly, that was something, one of the things I wish that would disappear when I was in college. I thought that after I do work for like maybe a year, I think I will know a lot more and I, I won't feel like I don't have all the answers anymore. I, I will feel like, you know, I, all, I know this stuff. Like I'm, I'm fine. Like, I, like obviously I can do this. If anything, the more I learn, the less I know. And that is so true for embedded software engineering. But what I've learned over this time is that I just need to make sure to realize that when the imposter in me wants to kick out and just like kick me in the curb or something like that, I just want to make sure that I recognize that and I just say that, you know, that this is not the time. It's okay for me to not know everything. It's okay for me to not have all the answers. It's okay for me to take the time to figure things out and to learn all these things and to realize that I'm incapable of doing this. Wish I would have known how to handle these situations better, how to, how to deal with this imposter syndrome rather than just waiting for the future me to deal with it and hope that it will just disappear. You know, after I'm done with college, it's gone. Like it's out of the window, Ooh, bye bye bye. Number two is that I don't need an electrical engineering degree in order to be an embedded software engineer. I don't really need any degree to be an embedded software engineer. Lately in the industry, there's, there's been a big move that as a software engineer, you don't need to necessarily have a college degree. You just need to show that you're capable of doing the work and you have learned the coding skills and, and you're better. There's plenty of people in the industry that they don't have college degrees, but they're better software engineers than probably I am or probably you are. So, and that's fine. I don't, I don't think that college degree will grant you that. A good embedded software engineer is someone who writes amazing, amazing code but they also know about the lower level hardware. They don't need to know everything about the lower level hardware, but just enough to like read schematics and maybe make some decisions on uh, what the MCU might need in order to function properly. As an embedded software engineer, I've realized that a lot of the work that I do is not relatable to the classes that I've taken in the past. There are a few classes like some microcontroller classes and uh, two programming classes in Java and that's about it. And rest of it is just stuff that I've had to figure out on my own on the fly as I've done my work. So if I were to redo my college degree, I would probably do a degree in computer engineering software engineering or computer science. I strongly believe that those degrees are a much better fit for embedded software engineering than electrical engineering degree. When I started working as an embedded software engineer, I, I didn't do anything on the electrical engineering level. Depending on where you work or what you're doing, you might be doing some stuff, right? So if you work for a small company, you might have an opportunity to do a lot of things, wear a lot of hats. You could do the hardware design, you could do the electrical design, you could do uh, the embedded software design. You could do all those things. Typically, that's not the case. Number two is learning to design good and optimized systems in software. And since my background in electrical engineering, I didn't have a chance to learn much about software design and how to optimize for software and how to do all these things. And, and another thing to keep in mind for, for embedded software is that you have more constraints. You have constraints for power, you have constraints for memory, you have constraints for timing. That is stuff that a typical software engineer might not need to keep in mind, but an embedded software engineer does need to keep in mind. And this is stuff that took me a while to figure out and understand. And for example, it's not just about like writing the, the most optimized code or like the least amount of lines in the code. It's also writing the code that is the least amount of lines, but the least amount of clock cycles that it takes to execute it. It's very important to understand and it was it was not something that was taught to me at a school. Uh, I had to learn it on my own. I wish, I wish I would have had someone tell me at school like, you gotta do this and this is how you figure these things out. When you write the software, you gotta keep those things in mind. I think a lot of that is just my inability of understanding of, you know, what what did I need to do in order to become an embedded software engineer? So if you want to be an embedded software engineer, there's a video right here. You can you can take a look at it and, and check it out. Hope you hope you enjoy it. Number four, enjoy your time off. Just doing more work and putting in more hours 
doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you, it doesn't show everyone else how amazing you are. It just sets unrealistic expectations of what other people should be expecting out of you. They will be expecting that you will constantly be doing that amount of work. And if one year later you decide that, you know, I don't wanna do 45 hours per week anymore. I don't wanna do 50 hours per week anymore. I'm just gonna do 40 hours, right? Then the project managers are gonna be like, what the heck, wait, great, you always do 45 hours. You don't have a life. Like you don't have a personal life. Like what do you, what do you think you're doing? I just kept putting in more hours and more hours initially, even without any really reward for it. The problem with that is I, I feel like I, I kept getting burnt off. I, I got home, I didn't really want to do anything else. I just didn't have that time to do any personal projects. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted to be lazy. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just lazy. Just thinking about the aspect of, if, you, if I keep putting in four extra hours every week and I keep doing that for a year, in that year span, I'm giving 250 hours of extra work for the company. And if you're a salaried employee, you're not gonna get extra money for it. You, you're, you're not gonna get a bonus for that, for that extra 250 hours. You're not gonna get paid for those 250 hours. Yes, you're gonna get a bonus in the end of the year, maybe, depending on the company you work for, but that bonus is already part of your agreement. It's not gonna be for those 250 hours. I feel like it's, it's not being worth for me. And I just, it's just something that I need to keep in mind personally that I limit my hours of the work that I'm doing and make sure that I'm not burning myself out and just staying constant. And obviously, if there's a deadline that I, the project that I'm on needs to be met and, and we're behind and we, this is very urgent and we need to get this thing out of the door and like all this stuff, I'm, I'm gonna put in those extra hours and, and I'm gonna do the work that it does. I'm gonna be there for the team and I'm gonna work together with the team. If you're in a position like that, just, just take the time off, play video games, Spend time with your family, spend time with your significant other, and enjoy your time. That's, that's all you have to do. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and seriously, consider doing that because we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, so make sure you smash that subscribe button. Other than that, I'm out of here. Bye.